This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hello friends, uh, this is Dr. Deepak Meghu and today I will be presenting a case of a traumatic cataract with uh, secondary glaucoma. This is a 40 year old lady who has sustained a penetrating injury with a stick about 3 days back and she presents to her hospital with this clinical condition. We can see a sealed corneal wound of entry, the anterior chamber is extremely shallow and the anterior capsule is ruptured. The swollen lens matter is causing uh, a nearly flat anterior chamber. The patient has severe inflammation and uh, she also has a severely raised intraocular pressure. It's almost 70 mm of mercury. Not surprisingly, even if uh, with all anti glaucoma medications and IV mannitol, the intraocular pressure refuses to normalize. This case surely requires an urgent surgical intervention. The patient was taken to the OR on the next day after IV mentol and anti-inflammatory therapy and anti glaucoma medications. So I begin my surgery by making my first side port entry. It is made uh, in an area where the anterior chamber is formed and slightly deep. However, I postpone the second side port entry as I realized that the anterior chamber in that quadrant is absent and I am uh, more likely to damage the underlying iris or the anterior capsule if I proceed with the, the second side port incision. I am trying to stain the anterior capsule uh, and after irrigating the dye out, I am injecting dispersive OVD to form the anterior chamber. The anterior capsule split is seen which is extending from equator to equator at both the ends. Now with the chamber which is well formed, I am completing my second side port quite safely. A 2.8 mm posterior limbal incision is then created. I first begin uh, the surgery by aspirating the soft lens matter with uh, bimanual cannula. I just want to clear the area so that I can get an idea about the extent of anterior tear and also the density of the underlying nucleus. Before coming out, I inject dispersive OVD into the anterior chamber to ensure that there is no shallowing of the chamber. At this stage, I am unable to judge the presence of any associated posterior capsule tear. The nucleus is very soft as expected but it still needs to be aspirated by the phaco probe itself. I begin my phaco aspiration of the nucleus and these are the parameters. Please note that I have kept a very low bottle height along with other parameters which are also considerably lower. The low infusion pressure is critical since it helps me to prevent sudden deepening of the anterior chamber which could then extend the anterior capsule tear beyond the equator onto the PC. So carefully the soft lens matter is aspirated which is coming out in piecemeal manner. This entire process is done while maintaining the stability of the anterior chamber and not compromising its equilibrium. Once the soft nucleus is aspirated out, the remaining cortex is aspirated using bimanual irrigation aspiration system. The bag is then formed with a cohesive OVD. I'm implanting a multi-piece hydrophobic acrylic lens into the bag. Care is taken to ensure that the haptics of the lens are oriented 90 degrees to the quadrant of radial extension of the anterior tear. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is then gently aspirated out and that's it the case is done and this is the first day uh, picture of the eye well there's a dramatic improvement in the clinical condition the patient is very much relieved of her pain 
the intraocular pressure is uh, come back to normal and she's having a decent amount of vision in the immediate post op period uh, well she continues to do well uh, in the coming weeks where well, the three points we can learn from this case are in eyes with traumatic cataract and rupture enter capsule which is causing secondary glaucoma and uveitis early surgical intervention should be the norm secondly the post operative outcomes are excellent in such eyes if early and timely intervention is carried out provided there is minimal collateral damage to the other parts of the eye and finally during surgery care needs to be taken in maintaining the anterior chamber stability and equilibrium which is critical uh, in minimizing the chances of extension of the anterior capsular tear well beyond the equator and into the posterior capsule thank you for attention and hope this helps